embracing the journey. Uh, what I referenced earlier, like I've had a lot of conversations with my SDRs in our 101s because we always talk about like, okay, career development and expectations of the role. And I think really painting the picture on how sales is a long-term journey. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And it's something that you have to keep like practicing every day to get better on. And if you don't practice, you're gonna lose sight of that. So what I really encourage any SDRs um, or anyone thinking about a career in sales is for you to really like to embrace the journey, recognize what your strengths and weaknesses are throughout the process. Don't get so fixated on the next stepping stone or the finish line just because so-and-so at another company is being promoted. What's going on, everybody? It's Morgan J. Ingram here, host of the SCR Chronicles, where I bring you sales development knowledge, advice and motivational tips uh, as you enter into your sales development role, your sales role, and also your entrepreneurial journey, as I believe sales development is the mantra and the centerpiece of your career and also as a sales professional. So uh, without any further ado, I have Melissa Liu here who is from Chow Now. She is a huge fan of the show and also of the podcast. And she has been with Chow Noun for over two, three years now. And she was an SCR and has grown through the ranks. She's now managing a team and she's crushing it over there. So I'm super excited to have her on today because she has a, definitely have been in the grind of sales development and now managing sales development, which is always a, a core component and a great person to talk to. And the topic we're going to talk about today is sales development's importance in the sales community. There has been a lot of negative feedback and there's been some positive feedback. So we're going to talk about both and how it's applicable moving forward. So without any further ado, Melissa, introduce yourself a little bit further and why you're excited to be here. Hey, Morgan. I'm so excited to be here to be part of the SDR Chronicles. I've actually been a fan since the beginning. I think you and I like started around the same time as SDR. So mm -hmm. I was really searching for your content for a voice that was very like similar to like our generation that was actually going through the day-to-day -day grind. So I'm currently an SDR manager at Chow Now. I climbed through the ranks, started as an SDR, became a team lead, and now I manage a team of seven SDRs. Uh, and Chow Now essentially is a white label online ordering solution for restaurants. So we give restaurants the technology so that their customers can order directly from them. But I'm super hyped up about this topic. I'm really, really passionate about sales development and the community. Lately, I've been having a lot of conversations with other thought leaders about how we could kind of change the negative narrative that has been going around on social media. That gets me like very, very fired up about. So I'm excited to be here and chat with you guys about sales development. So let's let's start off first and why you believe this happening. So you know I've seen a lot of negative posts. I don't see as much anymore. I think the narrative uh, has changed, and there's it's not as bad as it used to be, but it's still there. Why do you believe that there is this negative feedback uh, to SDRs overall? Yeah, I think a lot of times people see the SDR role as like a stepping stone into like your sales career. So a lot of people equate it as like entry level sales. So you know, with that comes a lack of education around the role. Because for me, I think the role can be a long-term career. I don't think it needs to be just a foundational role. I actually think it's a really important role because you're gaining the skill sets that will make you successful if you decide to go into like a full closing role. But I think part of it is just a lack of education on what like the SDRs actually do. The post I used that I was referencing earlier was that I saw a lot of people like just put out like emails that were blasted to them from like SDRs and while I may understand they're just trying to teach people what not to do, I think there's like a better format to do that. Because I really do think like this role is very valuable. It's like the lifeline for a lot of companies. Many people wouldn't be able to, the, to do this role like you and I know, it's, it's yeah. a grind. It's hard for a reason. Yeah, no, I, and I agree with that 100%. And I know that, you know, you started off as an SDR, but you, but you came from a different industry. So tell me how important that was for, for you getting that guidance and that feedback of positivity going into that new role as an SDR. 
Yeah, so I actually started in the financial services industry, and um, I that was my first job out of college. I just kind of jumped into that because I had loans to pay, and I'm like, why not? Yeah. So I went into wealth management, was doing pretty well, got my Series 7 and 63 like license, but then just couldn't help shake off the feeling that I could be working on something a little more impactful to a wider range of people because my company at the time was just servicing the top 1%. So I had tons of friends that were up in the Bay Area and they were actively working on products that were like disrupting their industry. So I thought to myself, like, I want to get into tech. Like tech is woven into my life like every day. So when I came across this Chow Now role, I'm like, I'm a foodie too. Let's blend the two worlds together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Food and technology. I was like, what is this? A sales development representative role. I was like, huh, I've never done 100% sales before. But I thought to myself, that has to be like a valuable skill set, regardless if it's in your professional life or in your personal life. Like you need to sell people on yourself, like the value that you bring to the table. So I, I told myself, like, you know what, I'd rather take this leap of faith now than look back with any type of regret. I could always go back to the finance world. There's going to be a dime a dozen in one of those jobs. So I, July of 2015, took a leap of faith, jumped into the SDR role, and whew, was that one heck of a ride. The first couple of months, I was just trying to figure out what to do. I was like cold calling, like there's no structure. Like, yeah. what, what am I supposed to do? Like, here's a goal that I, I have to hit every month, but how do I get there? And I think having that previous experience before where there was some type of structure, I knew early on that if I could just figure out a process that was successful for me and if I could replicate it each month, I would be able to hit my goals each month. Yeah, and I think that's super important that you have that reinforcement to make sure that you could hit those goals every single month. Uh, coming in from it, I know, you know, people that I've managed and people that are friends of mine coming from a different industry and then coming into the SDR role is tough because you don't know what to expect. But that mental shift that you have to have and people that can come in and help you is the ultimate game changer. Very true. And so I agree with that. Yeah, no, you, I mean, yeah, it's I think that's that's really what it is at the end of the day. And I don't think a lot of leaders and people that maybe are trying to give that feedback, maybe through social media, understand that, hey, these are people who are coming into their roles that don't really have any much experience. So like, yeah, they're going to make mistakes just as that, just as you may have made mistakes when you started your career. For sure. I think it's so important too, like for someone being in the role, for them to really embrace everything like a sponge. Um, I think so often a lot of SDRs, they get fixated on the finish line. Like what's the next step for me? Yeah. Whether that's an account executive or a field rep position, they're so fixated on the end outcome that they forget about like the journey and like the process and really recognizing what your strengths and weaknesses are to recognize like, well, how did I have that blowout month? Like what did I do exactly? Instead of being so fixated on like, well, I want to become an AE, like this is the number I have to hit, like what did you do exactly to help you have the successful month? What did you do to connect to all these people? How did you find these buyers? Was it your personalized email outreach? Was it because you're really good at identifying pain? Like don't miss that process because that's going to help you longer term. 100%. And there's now, now because of that, Longer term, there's two things I want to talk about there because this conversation is more so how does sales development help in the sales community? So number one, let's say that I'm an SDR. I come in my organization. I'm not really getting the guidance on leadership that I thought I was going to get. And this job is increasingly hard. I'm not really getting that feedback. What are things that I can be doing to get myself positive reinforcement? Yeah, uh, I found a lot of help within my peers. Like we're super collaborative. When you're in the sales pit, it's that ride or die mentality. Yeah. And oftentimes, like, you know, when a call doesn't go well, like we ask each other for feedback or if a call on the flip side, if a call does go well, like, what did you say like to get their interest or what did you say to like find that, that pain or that compelling reason that we're bringing value to the table to um, my peer to peer, like network really helped. And Additionally, finding other like resources like outside, like this SDR Chronicles. Lately, I found a sales development community Slack channel that's been really helpful. It's that kind of like 
period of here, like sharing sharing what's working well for you, your best practices and your challenges that will help you evolve quicker. Because remember, you're a sponge and you want to absorb as much as possible. And outside of your actual um, experience on the phones, the other like helpful best practices you can get is from like your peers. Yeah, and that's that's super important. And then where else can they go? Like, what if what if my peers are not even good? What if my peers are annoying me? What do I do now? You got to go find content. You know, so much of this role is based on like initiative, and yeah. what you put forth into this is what you're going to get out. And that's what I love about sales. Like, a hundred percent, all your like input will dictate your output. So, I mean, I, I found stuff on like sales hacker. I found other outreaching to other like sales development reps or account executives like on LinkedIn, just doing like social media outreach because you're not going to get the help you need unless you ask. That's, that's, that's true. That's true. You won't. And from my, let, let's say, okay, great. I have, I'm connecting with, you're using the tactics. I'm connecting with sales development people. I'm getting that reinforcement. It's also extended because you said long term, you're looking to move into an account executive role or you're looking to move into leadership. What are things that you can be doing uh, to be a part of the community? What are some of the things that we could be doing to be a part of the community? Like embedding yeah. yourself, like Connecting. just putting yourself out there. Yeah. Like being afraid, being not afraid to like take risks and being creative and thinking outside of the box. And that's partially why I gravitated so much to the SDR Chronicles when I found your content was like, you were just doing it and you're putting your stuff out there. No one else was like doing video pertaining to the sales development space. And that's what I encourage a lot of SDRs to do is like, don't be afraid to like outreach on social media and put yourself out there because you never know what you're going to get back or what valuable advice you're going to get back. Um, I've, I've like talked to a lot of like sales development reps since I recently started publishing content and having like great conversations with them about like, you know, their, their current positions, like their current day to day, um, what they want next in their career, whether that's to stay in sales development, continue down the individual contributor route or go through sales leadership. Like I had an opportunity to continue down the individual contributor route versus like going into sales leadership. But for me, it was a more interesting puzzle to crack to try to yeah. try to see if I could teach others like the skills that I learned in the role. Cause I do think sales development is so, so, so important for any company. Yeah. And, and so the next thing is like, Hey, okay. Most companies don't see sales development as a, as a critical role at all. They just see it as like another thing that we have to help people maybe get in the organization and move on to the next role, but it's not really that big of a deal to us. Tell us a little bit more about how you personally are trying to change the narrative of the negativity that's going on maybe on LinkedIn or social media or just in general when people think of sales development. Yeah, I have recognized that changing the narrative starts with me. So I want to do this for my team because I want them to realize like how important sales development is at you know, their day to day, the work that they do every day is so important because they're generating pipeline for our company. And right. without pipeline, we won't have revenue and companies won't move forward. There's a reason why some of the largest companies like Salesforce and Google who have like immense brand awareness still need a sales development team because sometimes the hardest part of finding a sale is finding that deal and yeah. finding that opportunity, that hunter mentality. You're not going to get like pipeline if you're going to be a farmer. It's not going to come to you unless you have like some intense like marketing outreach campaign that costs zero dollars. And even then with that lead nurturing, like you need someone to like reach out to those prospects and who else is going to do it? going to be the SDRs, the BDRs, the sales development community. There's a reason why like this role was created and I think it's here to stay. And for the companies who don't take it seriously, I would ask them why, like, why aren't you investing in it? What, what if all those inbound marketing leads run out? What will you do? Do yeah. you expect your, your AEs and your territory managers to generate their own deals while running demos, while closing business? Yeah. while making sure they're onboarded. 
Yeah, I think I think those are there are a lot of good things that you have to really consider overall because you don't want to get down a, a down a pitfall of the negativity of thinking that oh wait like I don't have this I don't have that like what I'm gonna do this role as you said is an initiative and you have to be have a positive mindset about it or you're gonna fall through the cracks. Yeah, and I think the more we can talk about it on public forums and build awareness around this issue the more we can bring like respect and value to like our community. And recently, I mean, the reason why lately I've been so passionate about this topic yeah. is like I had an opportunity to attend the sales development conference up in San Francisco. I'm located here in LA, so our community is a bit more like fragmented. Mm -hmm. But when I saw like all the different companies that have like a sales development team and like just the narrative that they were talking about sales development in such a positive, like constructive light, like I thought to myself, like, I need to bring that to LA and I need to bring that, like, starting with me, starting with, like, thought leaders like yourself and having conversations with people like you and I and bringing that awareness about the impact of sales development. Yeah, and that's super critical. So what, what was your, what was that number one takeaway from, from going to that conference? That sales development is here to stay. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. And if you're not thinking about sales development for your company, then you're not thinking long term. Because we generate pipeline, we're building that revenue, we're driving companies forward. And that was like the biggest takeaway. I mean, there were so many little nuggets of information that was thrown out there. I really wish that conference could be in every like major metro city in the United States because people yeah. need to hear about it. Yeah, no, I mean, I think it's, you know, I think it's starting to cultivate here, at least from, you know, I'm from Atlanta. So in the Southeast, it's starting to cultivate more and more and people are starting to talk about it. But yeah, you know, the San Francisco, like a Chicago, New York, Boston, like they're definitely going to be up Austin. Those, those places are going to talk more about sales development, but you know, in the smaller cities, it's more so just an afterthought, like, yeah, we're gonna have an SDR or a BDR, like in our organization. And eventually we'll cultivate into something like it definitely is going to be more of a conversation now where sales development will be something that is prevalent within your organization and it won't be seen as negative. And I feel like it is seen as negative because obviously there's some people who continuously need to, you know, they need to grow, you know, grow their skills. They need to get into the role. But at the same time, it's, it is all new for everyone. You know, I don't think anyone is the master of sales development. I feel like people know it better than others, obviously, but it's still an ongoing thing. And, you know, as we grow as a community, we all have to help each other understand the different strengths and also weaknesses of sales development, and how we can improve upon that. For sure. Yeah. I mean, at times sales development, everyone is on the front lines, like defending the shield for the companies. Mm -hmm. These are your frontline soldiers at times, like they're the first impression to your company. And if you're not investing the time and resources to develop this team, like I think it's a loss because if you're not providing the proper training and tools like for these sales development reps to be successful in their role, at times that conversation ends right then and there with them. Yeah, yeah, and that is, that is true because the uh, SCR is the front lines and they're also the brand of the organization uh, going off to an account executive and the customer success they are the face, they are the face. So you have to make sure that they're saying the right thing. So from your perspective, from being an SDR, now you're managing SDRs. What has been the biggest pra like practicality tip that you can like really give someone right now and like that, that like generated into like a good result? Like you did something and it was like, this person was like amazed by your outreach or the way that you cared yourself. Yes. Uh, as an SDR? Yeah, just as an SDR or it could be an SDR manager where you gave uh, uh, some advice to like a rep and it, and it helped change them. Because I think people need to understand like what are people doing in the weeds that's actually getting good results? Because we hear about all the negative things, but let's hear about the positive things. Yeah, I think it's about embracing the journey. Uh, what I referenced earlier, like I've had a lot of conversations with my SDRs in our one-on-ones because we always talk about like, okay, career development and expectations of the role. And I think really painting the picture on how sales is a long-term journey. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And it's something that you have to keep like practicing every day to get better on. And if you don't practice, you're gonna lose sight of that. 
So what I really encourage any SDRs um, or anyone thinking about a career in sales is for you to really like to embrace the journey, recognize what your strengths and weaknesses are throughout the process. Don't get so fixated on the next stepping stone or the finish line just because so-and-so at another company is getting promoted. But no. what does that really mean if you get promoted and you end up failing in that role? That means you didn't do a good job of like really recognizing and absorbing like what your strengths and weaknesses are in that role. And for me, like I see that as a fail from the manager too. I take complete ownership of that, which is why I really push my SDR to think deeper about it. Cause this is about the long-term goal and building life and personal skills. And it's not just about the next role that you want to get into. It's about making sure you're equipped with the right skill set so that you could be successful wherever you want to be, whether that's within the same organization or elsewhere. Yeah, so talk about that, because I think that also is sales development importance overall, and not even the sales community, but across all communities. What is your perspective and your outlook on how the SR role can help you in your long-term career? Man, the SDR role can help in so many facets. We could go on and on about this, but listening is a huge component that's huge yeah that's huge and that's honestly something that someone has to keep working on continuously because a you first of all you need to be self-aware if you're not listening because i tell my sdrs all the time like a con when you have a dialogue with a prospect it needs to be a dialogue not a monologue yeah. if it's just you data dumping feature dumping like that's not a conversation you need to be able to understand like what the needs and value you can bring to the prospect. And in order to do that, you need to ask questions and you need to make sure it's not your agenda. You're really asking the question to find out like what you can solve for in their life or what value you can bring to the table. And I think that's so applicable in all facets of your life, whether that's like dating, or with your like relationships that you build outside of your life, like you need to understand like what value you can bring to the table. And that's like a skill set that they don't always teach you in school, but this role does. It teaches you like how to become like self-aware on what your strengths and weaknesses are, like how you prioritize your day. There's so many things you learn in this role. And that's what I love about being in the SDR role is we have so much autonomy to like create the outcome that we want. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I've like learned in this role. And that's what I hope mm -hmm. to instill in any of my SDRs that join my team and end up, go, whether they stay at Chow now or like go somewhere else, that's what I hope they take away with them. Yeah, I, uh, I, I agree with you hundred percent. I think if you do the SDR role, you can really do any role that you want to, if you put your mind. Absolutely. I tell people that every single time that I talk to NSCR teams, it's I'm telling them, Hey, look, like you're walking into, into an, a building and you know that you're going to get rejected every single day. I think if you think about it that way, like that takes a lot of mental fortitude. To, Who to, would want to do that on a normal day, right? Yeah, a sickening person. So. <laughs> <laughs> Who would want to do that every day? But yet our SDRs, we've done this yeah. every day. My SDRs are making 60 to 80 outbound calls a day. Wow, really? Possibly getting rejected 90% of the time. Ask me any sane person who's willing to walk into like a restaurant or a hospital and just do this and get rejected day in and day out. Listen, it's a grind. You, you give a lot of people a heart attack that are listening right now. <laughs> 60 to 80 calls. I mean, I, I make, I make like, I made like 50 to like 70, 50 to 60. And every time I would say that people were like, Oh my gosh, it's a lot of calls. And it's like, if you block it off with just two hour blocks in a day and you do 25 to 30 calls, like in an hour, like that's not that much actually, if you really think about it, it isn't, it really isn't. It's just like you are, if you're doing it throughout the day, yeah, that's a lot. But if you're doing it and just focus in for an hour and do those calls, you're killing it. So yeah, it isn't. But when I share those numbers with people, they get shocked too. And they have that same reaction, which is why it doesn't make sense to me. If you have that strong of a reaction, like, oh my God, that's so many calls. How do people do it? Then why do we not pay that level of respect to the people that actually do this day in and day out? Exactly. No, that's, that is a hundred percent point. I think a lot of people don't, don't like doing the cold call and I'm, I'm always fired up to do the cold call 
you know, every single time I made, I mean, I made one this morning and it turned into something. And I think it's, you can never be afraid of the phone. You can never be afraid of getting yourself out there and being unique and maybe causing a stir because that's what, S, that's what the SCR's importance is. The SCR's importance is to be the pattern disruptor that makes you get attention for your brand in the right way that turns into an opportunity. And I feel like that's actually one of the hardest things to do because every single part of the SCR's job is interrupting a, a pattern of the day that most people are not ready for. Absolutely. Yeah. Like being in the SDR role, you just reminded me of like this fantastic Ted talk that I, I watched recently, yeah. but being in this role, it desensitizes you to rejection and yeah. everyone watching out there, you guys should watch this Ted talk by Jia Jang. It's called a hundred days of rejection. Uh, every day he gave himself a challenge to push himself outside of his comfort level. And they usually have to deal with rejection. I think the first day he asked Starbucks, can I be a Starbucks greeter? But each day there was a different challenge. And by the end of the 100 days, he was completely fearless of rejection. And you will be surprised at like how many opportunities open once you let go of that fear. And I think in the SDR role, because they do it day in and day out, they start losing that fear and all these opportunities and growth like happens for them. Yeah. And that, and then that's, that's like the biggest thing that you want. You want growth. You want people to be excited and you want people to get away from the negative, the, the narrative that they are a negative force in the organization and that they're seen as just in a negative light on social media, which I feel like, again, is slowly diluting, but it's the message and the agenda that sales development is important and that we should be uplifting those people. I agree. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Awesome. Well, Melissa, thank you so much for hopping on the SDR Chronicles today. Uh, the last question that's every single person that comes on the show, what is your number one piece of advice that you give to SDRs as they enter into their new role? I would encourage you guys all to just be fearless. Don't be afraid to take risks, be creative because this role, is, there's so much autonomy to design it the way that you want. Um, so if there's that talk track that you're thinking about using, use it, just do it. I think the biggest fear people have is just taking that first step to actually do it. So I encourage you to be as creative as possible and take those risks in this role because there's so much to gain from it and very little to lose. Awesome. Well, there you go, Melissa from Chow Now. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening and tuning in. As I always say, guys, keep dialing and I'll see you guys soon.